Okay, last video I was discussing how when we have a complex value polynomial here, I'm writing it as f of z, and I'm letting the polynomial be z cubed plus 9. Uh, because z is a complex number, it means that the polynomial is also a complex number. And if I want to find the roots of the polynomial by plotting, I can plot the magnitude, this uh, representation, uh, of the polynomial. That is, the real part of the polynomial squared plus the imaginary part of the polynomial squared, square root of that. And the only way that the magnitude is equal to zero is if both the real part of the polynomial and the imaginary part of the polynomial are both simultaneously equal to zero. Okay, now let me uh, show you how these plots work out here. Uh, I know it looks like a lot. Let's uh, let me just work through it uh, slowly. Um, here's the polynomial I'm starting with, and what I want to do is I want to show you what the plots are for the real part, the imaginary part, the magnitude, and so on. Okay, now, so I have z cubed plus 9 equals 0. Now I'm going to bring this 9 over to the other side of the equation just to get it out of the way for now. So I have uh, z is x plus iy, right, and I have x plus iy cubed is equal to negative 9 x plus iy cubed is x plus iy multiplied by itself three times. So here's what we have right here. We have that. Here's x plus iy times x plus iy times x plus iy. Here it equals negative 9. So now I just go through and I, and I brute force out this uh, calculation. First I do uh, this term here times this term. When I do that, I get x times x, which is x squared. I get x times iy, which is i times xy. I get i times yx, i times yx right here. That's also plus i times xy. And then I get uh, iy times iy. i times i is negative 1. So iy times iy is negative y squared. So these first two items squared give me this term right in here. Okay, now I multiply by uh, this term here. So first two, iy times iy, gives me negative y squared and so on. So I have this multiplied by this. Again, I brute force it out. x times x squared um, gives me uh, uh, x cubed. Um, and uh, let's see, I, I have it. Okay, I've written it out down here. Or I've, sorry, I've combine these two terms here, simplify it just a bit. Now I multiply by this term. So x times uh, x squared minus y, I have uh, iy times i times 2xy. That gives me negative 2xy squared. So this times this gives me this. I have now iy times this function, x squared minus y squared, that gives me this. And I have uh, x times i times 2xy here. And um, that will give me uh, plus i times 2x squared y. So again, just multiplying this times this, I now have this long function. And I'm going to rearrange it. I'm going to take all the real parts in here and glump them together. So these are all the real parts. And I'm going to take all the imaginary parts and glump them together. So these are all the imaginary parts. So you see this is a real part. Okay, this is a real part. Uh, and uh, 9, I bring the 9 back over. Okay, bring, and so this is a real part. So when I bring the 9 back over to this side, it becomes a plus sign again. So these are the real parts. The imaginary parts are all the terms multiplying by i, and I bring those here. So this is this function, f of x, y, or if you like, it's f of z from up here. This is this function. Here's the real part of the function. Here's the imaginary part of the function. So I have that written right up here. Here's the real part of the function. Here's the imaginary part of the function. So now what we want to do is we want to plot these things out. Now I take this real part here and I simplify it a bit. Um, 
where I'm going to multiply x times x squared minus y squared. And when I do that, I get x cubed minus xy squared, and I still have a minus 2xy squared plus 9. So then I combine these two terms, and finally that gives me this most this simplified representation for the real part of the function. I do the same thing with the imaginary part of the function. Multiply this through by y squared. y squared times x squared times a negative y squared. This is what squared there. And this gives me i times negative y cubed plus 3x squared times y. You're just going to have to do these multiplications yourself uh, to uh, double check, make sure I haven't made a mistake. So these are the real and imaginary parts of my function f of z, and I need to plot those out. So I plot those out with my grapher. And so here's the grapher. And... Uh, so this is the real part right here, this expression, and I multiplied by a, a point 0.1 just to make it look better on the graph. And so let me plot that and show you what that looks like. So here's what it looks like. Now you can see that the, the function uh, uh, shoots off uh, to a plus infinity in, in along th sort of three curves. And then it also shoots off to negative infinity along three curves. Now you can see, for example, where does it cross zero? Well, there's going to be a whole curve here where it crosses zero. So if, so there are going to be three play. Here's let's say here's the real axis right here. You can see the, there's going to be a whole curve along back here where it crosses through uh, zero, a y, uh, uh, and there's, here's the imaginary axis right here, and you can see that there's a whole curve area here where this crosses zero, and over here there's a whole curve area where this crosses zero. So this is where the real part uh, of uh, f of z crosses zero. Now let's look at the imaginary part. Boom. Ah, right there. It has a similar type of behavior. Okay, we look at it here. This is the real axis right here. You see there's a place where this thing crosses zero, and then there's a place where uh, it's going to cut through zero here, and the same thing over here, where it's going to cut through uh, zero on, on this axis here. So where the function equals zero is where both the real part and the imaginary part equals zero. So let me just superimpose those two plots on top of one another. And look at that. You can see that the real and imaginary part of, the, of this function, they intersect one another. So we have this curve for the real part intersecting this curve for the imaginary part. The same thing happens over here. This curve intersects this curve. So it's where these two curves intersect and cross zero, that will be the location of the root. Uh, and uh, I have that plotted here, this plot. So where I'm plotting the, the magnitude uh, of the uh, uh, of f of z. So you see here is magnitude squared, because magnitude is always greater than zero, this thing's not going down to zero, where the real and imaginary parts did. And you can see that the way the curves intersect, it, go, it goes through, has three values where the magnitude is, in fact, equal to zero, here, here, and here. So I hope that that adds a little bit more insight into um, our our, our previous discussions of uh, the zeros of complex polynomials.